Welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin' Podcast. I am the newly coiffed Kelly Raspberry Evans, along with my husband, A-Train. Well, I'm Alan A-Train! <laughs> you know. I can't throw you off. No. Not even with that little bit of a, a different introduction. You cannot. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Man, so much has changed since we last met for a podcast. We took last with week off. With you. We had a lot going on. Please forgive us for not having a hot, fresh episode last week. But this week, it's piping hot. Oh. Steaming hot. Oh, it's, so much to share, it is a, including gonna, my oh, new hair. It's going to be a steamer. Because we talked about something a couple of weeks ago. We said, this listener, good, strong, dear, sweet, clean list, will blow your mind. You will not believe this, but we can't say a lot about it. Well, we can say everything about everything. it. Everything. We're going to say, gonna everything, say everything about it. The ink is dried. Yes. Yes. So we can talk about it. <laughs> we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to talk about it. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to yeah. talk about stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. including my hair. What do you think? So Alan, I like it. I really do. I just needed I like a trim it. so bad. It was getting really stringy, and I told Alan, I said, I'm going to go get it cut. I just don't know how short. I look back at pictures of me when I used to have shorter, sassy hair, and I'm like, oh, my hair looks so good that day, you know, but it's that one day, and then you forget about the days where I can't do anything in my hair. It's too short. But it was getting so stringy. So Alan said, well, you can do whatever you like, but, you know, I, I kind of like it long. I'm like, okay. So I went to Connie, who has cut your hair for almost 30 years. 30 years. And she's such a sweet lady. And so I told her, I said, you can go as short as you want. I said, but, you know, I've, I've been really kind of loving it long. Alan likes it long. So she really just kind of trimmed it up and shaped it up. And then she put a little curling iron in it just to get, she goes, you want me to curl it? I said, you do whatever you think is beautiful. And this is what she came up with. I love it. So I got a it little, looks really nice. It's date night hair. Yeah. And here we are no, recording I, I, a podcast. I really do like but it. But that's okay. You look very nice. You've, Thank got, you've you. got your nice new hair. You've got a nice uh, black blouse on. You've got. That's typical. Black you, is my comfort color. You've got pants on. I do have pants on. And I'm over here with a freaking motorcycle t shirt, a hat, and my fat man shorts. And your vans. And my vans. At with, what point are we too old for vans? Oh, never. Never? Never. And we're going to talk about that. We are? Yes, because... We're talking about vans? Yep. What a coincidence. I had no idea. Well, because um, on this podcast we have... A few letters? Well, your big news, but then letters. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think the letters plus this huge, huge news you have will take us through most of the podcast. I have some bonus stuff if we get to it. Well, let's get chop chop. Okay, let's get chop chop. So we teased a few episodes ago. Kelly had some big news, yeah, big announcement. Couldn't talk about it at the time, but if you follow Kelly on the social medias, you already know. You know, if you don't or didn't see it, so this is your fault. You should be following me on Instagram, right? (laughs) At Kelly Raspberry, babe. What happened this weekend? All right, so a couple weeks ago, I'm sitting on my big, well, Alan's big comfy chair. I guess it would be his by default. You know, like when your daddy had his own chair and you'd sit in it while he wasn't home, but the minute he walked in the door, you jumped up because that's daddy's chair. Nobody ever does that when I walk in. I don't necessarily jump up if I'm already in the chair all cozy. You don't get it. But if if you're home... You're like a roly-poly in that thing. If you're home, I'll go get in the other chair. You're dug in that thing like an ant lion. So I was settled down in Alan's big comfy chair. My man. And I just found out that I was going to have to speak for one hour... Um, I'm still negotiating that speech I have to give in a few weeks. And I was just like, man, the, the, the theme of this, the, the conference I'm going to be speaking out is like women who wow, women who inspire. I'm like, yeah. what's wow and inspiring about me? Wow. You know, I'm sure wow. if I took a minute, I'd probably think of a couple things. Well, literally no sooner than I had gotten off that phone call where I almost swallowed my tongue, literally. And they, I said, how long do you want me to speak? They said an hour. I went, <gasps> very professional. Mm-hmm. Alan what walks did you do? in. <gasps> <Okay. coughs> I'm going to choke if I do it again. Don't okay. want to do that again. Yeah. Tonsil? It's just, you know how sensitive my tonsils are. The helmet? No. So anyway, Alan walks in. <laughs> Bay. <laughs> like Santa Claus? <laughs> No, it's your sarcastic laugh. Oh, okay, okay. You remember how it went? Yeah, kind of. You kind of walked in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Babe, 
I've got something to ask you about. I already know the answer is going to be no, but I told him I'd ask anyway. True story. I, I don't know that I can't. Okay. True story. True story. I didn't come in like Santa. Not a lie. I didn't come in like Santa. No, but, but you okay. came in. <laughs> you know how you do. You know how you do, Alan. Okay, whatever. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear it, and when the next time he does it on the podcast, I will point it out. Okay. Or tell it. You came in. Oh, you want me to tell it? Well, I'd, I'd like you to be involved at some point in the podcast. Okay. Because <laughs> I take over a lot. No, it's okay, lot. because I, I do the letters. No, it's fine. I, I, I came in, and I had an opportunity for Kelly. I don't want to <laughs> spill the beans. It's your news. All right, so Alan says, I know you're going to say no. Yeah. He said, do you remember a couple years ago, maybe, when um, I took the boys out and I worked with, you know, this sea do campaign, right? Yeah. It was yeah. Um, sea do and it's where he, it was like a... We went to a lake on uh, Father's Day, Cedar Creek Lake, and me and the boys and uh, one of Cole's buddies, and you, too. Yeah, I came and joined you. Yeah, we went I had out... to work, so I came out after. We went out there with uh, with Sea-Doo, hashtag ad. And, uh, well, not now, but then it was but a hashtag then it, ad. But then it was an ad. Yeah. And we, um, you know, we had fun on this this new boat that they were launching. It was like a, a pontoon boat. But, but that, a fast one. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, um, and you filmed it and you were the, like did all this social media. A lot of you right. saw him on social media. I don't know where you can find it now. Medja. It, it's, on, it? it's on Sea-Doo's uh, YouTube channel. Sea-Doo yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. So Sea-Doo is owned by a company... Called Bombardier. Bombardier, and do they? How's the Can Can Am? That's a that's a big company that if you, Bombardier makes like jets, yeah, like private jets. Uh -huh. But they also own a bunch of other companies. One of them is Sea Do. Another one is called Can Am. Okay, so Alan, because of that connection, Alan comes in and says, um, Riker, the three wheel ve the three wheel vehicle. It's like a three wheel motorcycle, you know, with the two in the front and the one in the back. They are looking for a new female brand ambassador. And because they remember working with Alan and they met me and the guy that is in charge of this whole division lives right up the street, mm -hmm. thought of me mm -hmm. and wondered if I would be interested in becoming the brand ambassador for Riker's three-wheeler. <laughs> and I said, and he said, I already told him you'd say no. I said, well, maybe. He about swallowed his tongue at that moment. He's like, really? I said, well, yeah. I said, maybe. I said, a woman at my age and starting a new hobby of three-wheeling, that's a wow. Remember? That's a, that's a wow. And I literally just talked to those women about, you know, women who wow, women who inspire. What's more inspiring than taking on a new adventure than being the brand ambassador? Well, one of three brand ambassadors, but the only female for Can-Am Riker. I said, well, let's at least talk to the guy about it. So we set up a lunch meeting with Jonathan, who was very lovely, who paid for our lunch. That was very nice. And no, I, I didn't order cocktails. I was trying to keep it professional. But, you know, we just, he was very casual and laid back about it and said, you know, they were just, they're looking to kind of just do kind of a clean campaign, right? Social media campaign and thought I'd be a good match for three wheel vehicles, the Riker Can-Am. And I was like, okay. I, I said, let's try it. But the only thing is, okay, so the other, one of the other two brand ambassadors is um, Colton Underwood. Remember The Bachelor that mm -hmm. later came out as gay and he's like married and he's living his best life. He's one of the ambassadors. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the other one, but I'm the only female. Anyway, so I had to, as part of becoming the brand ambassador, thank you very much, um, I had to go take a motorcycle safety course and a certification course, mm -hmm. which I did this weekend. You did that this weekend, yeah. Yep. So I had to get, I had to take a five hour e-course online about, you know, watching all these motorcycle safety videos and, you know, just different learning about parts of a bike. And she only um, asked me one time for help. I was like, just one time. I was like, this is, a, I said, this could be like several possibilities here. It was like a multiple choice. I'm like, I can see where two or three could be the right answer. And Alan said, well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I kind of asked for Alan's help on that one. Just that one. That out of a five-hour course, you only asked for five help one course. time. So yeah. if I'm going to lose my certification for cheating, you just busted me. Well, I just, just told one. you what I thought the answer was. And you were right. You had to answer yourself. You were right. So anyway, I, um, I did the e-course. 
And then I was supposed to go Sunday morning, a Saturday and Sunday morning mm-hmm. from 8 a.m. till noon for mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the writing stuff. So um, I get up really, they want us to be there 20 minutes early. So I get up really early. By the way, there were a few tears shed during that e-course because you could only, they, they divided up into sections. So it was like 15 and 25 minute video sections and then you were quizzed. There was no way to fast forward. It's just like if you've ever had to do the, uh, if you got a ticket and tried to do the, the safety school thing, you know, mm-hmm. you, you can't fast forward. Why would you want to fast forward? Because you think, oh, I got this. This is mm-hmm. a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. But unlike with driving school, like when you get a ticket where you have to sit there the entire time and you can't walk away, thankfully with this one, you could do an hour, walk away, stretch your legs, take a nap, whatever, and come back to it. So I did it over like three days. Yeah. It was not hard. It I mean, it was not horrible. But if you didn't get... You didn't have to necessarily get 100% every time, mm-hmm. but you had to get at least 75%. And if you missed one too many, you had to do that section over again. And it wasn't a layup. No. This was this was a, a challenging course, And right? I had to redo a section, two sections, mm-hmm. twice. And the second time, I was so tired. It had been a long day. I started crying. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Alan, thankfully, was not in the room. Mm. But anyway, I made it. I, I passed, passed the course. course I got yeah. my certificate. I showed up at the class. And there were only four of us in it. And this one woman, one man drove three hours to be there because it was three or four hours because it was the closest course to him. They don't offer these in every city. Another woman drove two hours. Another one drove about 45 minutes. I live the closest. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the last lady that came in from from Dallas, she came rolling in there. She just, hi, everybody. Oh, this is so great. She said, my husband was so mad. I just bought one of these and showed up at home. He's a motorcycle cop. And she goes, but I, and she's a nurse. She said, I just wanted one. And she said, but I can't back it out of the garage. I keep crashing into the garage. So I'm here to take this course. <laughs> That's the only reason. So she can back it out of her garage. She said she was starting to get, you know, freaked out. And she'd worked herself up into a tizzy over it. And I had to tell her, I said, ma'am, you need to take some deep breaths because you are working yourself up into a panic. You just got to tell yourself, you can do this. You can do this. So anyway, she sits down and, and our teacher, Scott, he said, okay, everybody hand me your certificate. She's like, what certificate? Mm. He said, from the e-course you took. She said, what e-course? Oh. So she never read. Let me tell you, she was not taking this very seriously. She just wanted to literally learn how to back up. So anyway, she's like, what e-course? He said, well, you have to have the certificate. You have to complete this course in order to pass this class. If you pass this class, because you have to do all the skills tests in order to be able to get your license. She said, well, I'll just take it right now. <laughs> On my phone. It's five hours. It's five hours, ma'am. But he was very gracious. He said, look, if, if you, you, you take the course today, you pass, you get that certificate into us within the next you know week or so, and we'll get you your certificate. So that's what happened. So anyway, after we filled out some paperwork and signed some waivers, we went out into the parking lot of this nearly abandoned mall. I'll tell you a little bit about that in, in just a second. You know, when I woke up to go to this motorcycle course, I put on just the slightest touch of makeup because even if you have to be up at the butt crack of dawn, makeup just gives you confidence, right? And I needed confidence for my motorcycle class. And if you are needing, you know, confident makeup routine, if you just want to shake things up, Shake things up with Thrive Cosmetics. I love that the absolute favorite product I have of theirs, something I use every day, is the Brilliant Eye Brightener in the Stella shade. Because just a touch of the champagne color in the corner of my eyes, it makes them look more awake, more vibrant, right? And it comes in 16 shades, incredibly beautiful, buildable shades to create anything from a subtle glow to a dramatic smoky eye. And you know, eyebrows are having a big moment right now. And Thrive Cosmetics has their Infinity Waterproof Eyebrow Liner. It blends like a powder, holds like a wax. You just line your brows, give them structure, create these natural looking strokes to fill in the sparse places. It's really beautiful. Eight shades so you'll find your perfect brow match. Thrive uses only the cleanest ingredients. They feel so good on my skin, but I also love knowing that when I use Thrive Cosmetics, I'm doing good. For every product purchase, they donate to communities in need and support causes close to our hearts, including our helping our veterans. So refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics, luxury beauty that gives back. And right now, you can get an exclusive 10% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash sandwich. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S. 
Facebook.com slash sandwich for 10% off your first order. All right, so I show up at this nearly abandoned mall. If you're familiar with the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there used to be a mall when I moved here in the early, the mid-90s called Vista Ridge Mall. You remember Vista Ridge Mall? Yeah. It was happening. And fun fact, um, a long time ago, I had a girlfriend who went to North Texas, and she lived around in Denton, which is far from that Straight mall. up 35, yeah. There was a pet store in that mall. Mm -hmm. We would always go to pet store. Like, they don't have yeah. pet stores anymore. Yeah, we go to this pet to store sort of. and just look at the just look at the animals. Well, it used to be a happening mall. It used to be a happening place. it's yeah. kind of abandoned for the most part. It's still open. There's like a Dillard's Clearance Center, which actually I'm going to go back for a Monday with Mama because we love a good bargain. But anyway, um, it's mostly abandoned. And, um, but in, they have a little storefront for this, um, it's called, I'm going to give him a shout out, Lone Star Bikers. Anyway, our instructor, Scott, he took us out into the parking lot. And like I said, there were four of us in this three WV class, three wheel, three wheel vehicle class. Mm -hmm. And then over on the other parking lot, there was the motorcycle class, the two wheeler class. Oh, the two wheel guys. And yeah. there were like 40 of them. There and were gals. A lot of people I out. saw gals over yeah. there too. Yeah. So there were three women in my three WV class and one gentleman who mm -hmm. was just really a great guy named Rick. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we just basically and um, started off just getting familiar with the bike, you know, just giving us, you know, learning the throttle and the, you know, and the thing about three WVs is you don't have to worry about gear shifts and clutches and all that stuff. It's really it's automatic, right? Automatic, simple, but it's still about learning how to. Oh, I think the problem a lot of people have is they just gun it and they're like, oh, and they take off and they panic, you know? Right. So he had us, it's sort of like I was explaining, like when my daddy taught me how to drive a stick shift. Um, he would make me put it in first and stop. Put it in first, go, and stop. Put it, in, and we did that, you know, to the point where it became boring. Mm -hmm. And that's what Scott said. He said, you're going to, you know, some things you're going to be like, okay, I got it. Let's move on. Let's speed up. And he said, I kind of want you to have that feeling. Right. Because he wants you to, he wanted us to build our confidence and want to go faster and you know do more things. Now before this though, how long were you inside the mall in the classroom before you came out? Not even 20, 30 minutes. So he didn't do a lot of talk and he just said, "Hey, this is what we're going to do." And then yeah, you it went was outside? about signing waivers and oh, okay. stuff, okay. and just make. He wanted to gauge our level of confidence, and um, you know he had us like there was a thing on the board. We from a scale of one to ten. You know, what is your commitment to safety? How do you feel you are already as a safe driver? Okay. You know, things like that. Okay, so you did some drills. So anyway, so I'm out there and we're just learning to, you know, kind of go and stop taking it kind of easy. And then out of the corner of my eye, I, I, I see my, my paparazzi. I'm like, <laughs> They follow me everywhere. How did the paparazzi find me uh -huh. at 8.30 a.m. in an abandoned mall please, parking please, lot? Please describe. That he was kind of a shady character and a baseball cap. A shady and, character. And shorts and van checkered <laughs> slip-on shoes. It was my husband, Alan. Yes. And he's with his long Lives thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank over you. in the sh in the trying to be inconspicuous over in the I wasn't cheese. trying to be inconspicuous so at all. I kind of went over to my uh, instructor Scott. I said, "That's my husband." Because I mean, how weird is it to have your husband, you know, proud show up to take pictures? And I explained to him. I said, "Look, I said I'm I'm going to be working with Can Am Riker, so um, he's going to take some pictures for me to use on social media." He said, "No problem, it's fine." So what happened with me that morning while Kelly was at her her class? Dylan had a doubleheader baseball game games in McKinney, so they were early in the morning. So I ran him up there, got him with his team, and then ran all the way over from McKinney to Louisville, which is I mean, it's not super far, maybe thirty minutes, twenty five minutes. And it was sweet of you to do it because you're so excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I was. I was excited for you. And then I drove up and cut. I was like, there she is. She's my, on my the red ponytail. <laughs> there she is. I was like, that's my awesome. Helmet. Oh, I was laughing in the car. I was like, there she is. She's <laughs> on it. So, Did you think I was going to quit? No, no. Part I, of you? I didn't think you were going to quit, but I. <laughs> Part of it's kind of a surreal, I guess, uh, thing, you know. I you drove, never expected to see it. Yeah, I drive up and I'm like, there she is. She's on the three-wheeler. Now, when Alan got there, we were at the very beginning stages, and they also put a key in the Can-Am, so you can't go above, I think, 28 miles an hour, because so, they don't want us, like, 
being renegades and, you know, taking off. So it wouldn't go beyond 28 miles an hour. But let me tell you something, 28 miles per hour is pretty pretty good clip. Yeah, if you've never been on one, yeah. it feels pretty quick, right? So we did a lot of it first. It was just safety drills, like learning how to take a sharp turn, mm -hmm. um, learning how to, like, what he made us do, which was really kind of exciting. And I was very proud of myself at how well I did, honestly. He would have us gun it, mm -hmm. and you had to reach, um, I think he said at least 18 miles per hour, which, again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to meet, reach it in a short distance. And some people didn't, one girl, the, the last lady, she had to do it over and over again because mm -hmm. she just couldn't get up to 18 miles an hour. But me, I gunned it you as just, hard as I could. Really? And so by the time I got to where I was supposed to be, I was about 25 miles per hour. Wow. And then, he, but he wanted us to slam on the brakes because he wanted us to be able to, like, if you're in a neighborhood, and, you know, typically in a neighborhood, what is it, 20, 25 miles per hour? Mm -hmm. And what if a ball bounces out in the street in front of you? What's usually chasing that ball? A kid. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be able to stop on a dime, well, yeah. as quickly as you as can. As quickly as you can, yeah. Because it's impossible to stop dead in your tracks like that. So that's what we were doing. So panic and stops. Panic stops and over and over and over again. And that was really fun. And the three-wheel vehicle has, it has, like, ABS, right? Yes, anti-lock You can't lock system. the brakes up. Yeah, I learned that. Yeah. But, so we did that. We did a lot of, you know, maneuvering in and around cones and, mm -hmm. you know, left turns, right turns. So it was just a lot of, you know, skills. And we learned how to drive over. He's, you know, he's teaching us about driving over obstacles, mm -hmm. like how you stand up a little bit in your seat. So if you're, that's how you get bucked off. Like, he's like, it's kinetic energy, I think he said, and it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And But if you're standing up, your legs kind of act like springs. But right. if you're sitting with your butt on it, it'll literally throw you off your bike. Right. I'm not so much on a three-wheeler as much as a two-wheeler, I guess. But, right. so anyway. That happened the, to me once in my, uh, I'm not trying to hijack your no, story. No. But when I went to I'm that. I'm doing a lot of talking. Remember when I went to that off-road class a yeah. long time ago? He, we did the same thing, do obstacles, and that's when I wrecked. Yeah. That's the only time I've wrecked. Was we, I was practicing the obstacle, and that thing bucked me off. Yeah. And, remember, and I was on the ground so fast, I didn't even know what happened. That's the thing. It happens. Yeah. You know, you can't believe how fast things can, can change, right? Yeah. So anyway, our, our instructor, because there was only four of us, it was a smaller class, he said, look, we were supposed to, it was hot. It was starting to get hot. You know, we did have some shade trees, but he said, look, we can either crammed us all in because he was able to work faster because there was fewer of us that he was having to work with. And we were all catching on pretty quickly, except for one student I won't mention. Mm. Um, but she ended up passing. Anyway, he said, we can, if we can stay a little longer, I'll get you done by 2 o'clock instead of noon, and you won't have to come back on Sunday. That's and a, we're all like, that's a yes, great deal. we'll do that. Great deal. So by 2 o'clock, I passed. I did everything I needed to do. I reached the speeds I needed to reach. I stopped like I was supposed to stop. How I cool swerved, is that? and I, I, you know, I, I'd like to think I was the best one in the class. How cool is that? I'd like to think it. The, the, you know, Scott doesn't like to show favoritism. Right. Usually, but, and I notice this at your class. Usually, they'll put the faster students leading everybody. And. You were the first student. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So anyway, I got my certificate. Now, Alan, I've got to do this. I, we've had such a crazy week. I haven't, it's only Tuesday we're recording this, but I've got to get online with the DMV and schedule an appointment because I've got to take my little certificate up mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. and I'm going to take my driver's license and they're going to do whatever they have to do, put that little mark on it that says I am street legal Yes. to go on-roading because you know, this is Can-Am on road. That's right. That's what I'm doing. So I'm very, very excited. <laughs> so wow, right? Am I a woman who wows? That's a woman who wows. Yeah. And when I talked about this on the Kid Crowd at Morning Show, naturally simple. Um, I already had this lovely woman call in and said, Kelly, I met you a while back when we had the slingshot. Okay. And she said another three wheel vehicle. Yeah. But that's a competitor. A, com a competitor. Right. And I apologize. I don't know if I'm allowed. Yeah, it's fine. They, it's not like they don't exist. We don't have the slingshot anymore. No. But anyway, she said, I met you then, and she said, we have a riding club. And she said, we'd love to have you join us. And they ride down to, I think it, she said Houston. I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm ready for Houston. You're going to ride down she to Houston? Said, she said, we just had it in March. So I have until next March. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Yeah. But, you no, know. I, I'm, I'm not being like, well, yes, you're, you're going to do it, or no, you're not going to do it. I you're just, acting kind of, you're about to do that. 
<laughs> like, San, like Santa? It's um, not Santa. It's Smirky. It's Smirky? Snarky? Smirky? Oh, my gosh. Anyway, there you have it. Wow. I am now... Look. Wow. I have wow. not had a hobby in my entire life other than watching reality TV. Not really a hobby. I like to do a crossword puzzle. Uh, you know. Wordle? Sudoku. Wordle. Crossword, Are those hobbies? Crossword puzzles? I'll do a jigsaw puzzle from time jigsaw to time. Jigsaw puzzle? Which could be a hobby if I did it, you know, on repeat. But now, as a seasoned woman mm -hmm. of 57 years, mm -hmm. I'm finally getting hobbies. You are, babe. That's crazy, I'm, I'm, right? I'm pretty tickled about this. I'm learning. I would have gone Tuesdays has become, well, <laughs> for two Tuesdays. Uh, Alan and I have been going out to the golf course, but we had some stuff come up today we couldn't. But, um... I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really do well with that. And our sons are now, like, making bets with me about going out to the driving range and who can hit the ball Dylan, farthest. Dylan thinks he can hit it further than you. So and, we, he, and he bet you a cheeseburger? We bet a, um, a quarter pounder. A quarter pounder. With cheese on it, whoever hits farther. <laughs> okay. Because I, I love a McDonald's cheeseburger now. So I bet him, a, but he likes the quarter pounder with cheese. I said, I'll bet you. So we're going to have a little driving competition on the golf range. So I've got golf, three-wheeling. I mean, like, the possibilities are endless, Alan. You're doing really great with the golf. You really are. I'm not just saying that. She really is. I was really a little is. frustrated our last lesson. Well, and I told Kelly, as you get better, you expect more of yourself, so then you get more frustrated. That's the maddening part of golf. But anyway. But when that, you instruct me. Yeah. She's doing, but I can't have you instruct me every swing. I've she, got to get to the point where I do it without you having to instruct every little thing. She's doing great with the golf. But back to the, uh, the, the uh, Can-Am. I'm not going to lie. When I was first presented with this to ask Kelly about, I told Jonathan, <laughs> well, I don't think I laughed like Santa Claus. But it's not Santa. I said, Santa's ho, ho, ho. I said, you know, Jonathan, I'll be happy to ask her, but I think the answer is not only be no, but hmm, no. Not that you would say that to him, but you would say that to me. Hell no. Right. So I said, just, he goes, oh, that's fine. He, but I, he said, if you're willing to ask her. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll ask her. But I was very, very skeptical that any of this would happen. Number two, once it did happen, it, it's a strange feeling because I, I ride. I rode the three-wheel vehicles. I ride on motorcycles now. And I never worry about myself. But when your wife says she wants to ride, it's a, it was a strange feeling. It's you like were nervous for me. Yes, extremely. Because I want to say there was a, there was anxiety. I had my because, chest was getting the anxiety. Is it because you lack confidence in me, or you're scared for my safety because of others, and because you want to be my protector, or because you don't believe I can do it? It's not because I don't believe you can do it. I have had a lot. I'm of, giving you a chance to be romantic. Well. I want to. I want to make sure you're okay. That's the bottom. Oh, that's the bottom line. I'm swooning. Well, <laughs> we're talking about motorcycles. I'm not trying to be romantic. I'm just saying. You could be romantic with a motorcycle. How? Oh my God, Fonzie! <laughs> hello. Anyway, King I was. King of romance. It's kind of. I don't 50 know. Sitcoms. This whole thing still gives me a little bit of anxiety, just because I've had plenty of opportunity to witness a lot of knuckleheads on the road, and there's knuckleheads on the road. You have, but you learned in your class. Right? Always keep your head up. Always ride defensively, right? You learned all this. Always wear your safety equipment, right? You learned all this. Yes. And you have to watch for things that you think may happen, even if they don't happen. Yeah, you have to, like, that's, that was the, on um, the e-course, they would make you, like, you, they'd give you a still shot of an intersection. They're like, okay, where, you know, you'd have to look at it really quickly, and then they'd ask you questions like, what is the possibility of a hazard? And it's like, okay, I have to remember, there was a guy that was about to probably turn left. You have to assume he's going to turn left in front of me. If I have to escape, is it safe for me to pull off on his shoulder? Things like that. You have to kind of be thinking. And you think it's impossible, but I think a lot of things do come instinctively after a while. You just have to get used to looking for those things, right? So I'm not, I'm not as anxious as I was yeah. before the class, but I'm also not going to like take off on an iron butt competition with Alan either. No. Because our instructor, what he suggested to the woman who was having issues backing out of her garage, she's like, I got to go um, to, Mip she's going to Memphis, was it? 
she was going with a bike group to Memphis in a month, and she can't even back it out of her garage, you know? Yeah. And he was like, what he would suggest to her, which is what I'm going to do, is you just take your three-wheel vehicle, and you go to a store a mile down the road to the convenience store. Get you a soft drink, go home. Do that for about a week. Just do that that simple route. Mm -hmm. Then you go a little further out, two or three miles, mm -hmm. and you just get comfort comfortable in those roads around your home. And then eventually, I'll take it out. You know, maybe on a not necessarily on the highway or the tollway, but the side streets. Maybe you know, like when you drove me up to Prosper, mm -hmm. we took the side streets all the way up, and that would be a nice little adventure. Just real quick, and, I, and we're going to do this. Yeah. I was driving back from lunch today. Kelly and I had lunch with a couple of Kelly's coworkers today. I'm driving up uh, Preston Road. There's a Mercedes in front of me. For those of you who don't know Dallas, we apologize, but it's a major road. Major road. There's a guy in a white Mercedes SUV in the right lane. I'm in the center lane. So Holmes just starts to come over. I'm like about where his rear wheel is. Holmes starts to come over in my lane. Doesn't see you. You're at his blind spot. Well, no. Uh, no. I was trying to accelerate to get out of the guy's blind spot. Well, you were and, in his blind spot, and, though. Well, no, I was coming up the road. Oh. I wasn't riding in his blind spot. Oh. That's a no-no. So I'm coming up the road, and I'm trying to get out of it, so I keep going. I want to go past him. But Homeboy decides to come over. Well, I look over at Homeboy. He's got two hands off the steering wheel, and he's messing with his phone. So the car just veers over in my oh, lane. He wasn't trying to switch lanes. He was veering. No, he was looking at his phone. So he could have killed you. Well, yeah. So I honked him, and I'm like, I just look at him, and he just waves at me. I'm like, like yeah, I'm like, dude, I don't understand. But that that's when I'd say the anxiety, it's not you. I know you're going to do all the right things, but, you know, there's a lot it's of... the other, yeah. There's a lot of things to think about. Now, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. It's going to be wonderful. But when one of your loved ones decides to do this... It's different than when I decide to do it. Am I one of your loved ones? Well, yeah. Thank you, honey. Yeah. You know, Alan and I are not just excited about my new career as a influencer. <laughs> wow. What am I? A brand ambassador. Dang. We're also, you know, we've been telling you a little bit about trying to grow our Sandwiches and Loving YouTube page. There's so many exciting possibilities with that. And speaking of exciting possibilities, have you checked out Pair Eyewear's Endless Options for Stylish Glasses? Now, they've got base frames starting at just $60, and that includes a prescription. But the real fun comes when you start changing out the top frames. Those start at just $25, and you literally just snap them on with tiny magnets. You can change the top frames to match your outfit, your mood, the holiday. They've got a really great 4th of July collection out now. But if you are a Star Wars fan, on Me, May 4th, I am. May the 4th, get it? They dropped their Star Wars collection of top frames, Alan. I want 21 some. 21 designs. It includes the Princess Leia, the 3PO, all your favorites, Chewbacca. There's a Rebels versus Empire top frame, a Darth Vader. No, nope, I want the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, they got it. And the Force is Strong with these. You can get them for 15% off with our code LOVIN at PearEyewear.com. Also, Pear's Sun Tops are game changers. They eliminate the need to buy prescription sunglasses. They're just incredibly easy to snap on. No more fumbling in your bag for sunglasses. And Pear Eyewear is for the entire family. They've got kids frames too. All budget friendly, no compromising on style or quality, and they come with free standard shipping and a flexible 30 day return policy. One pair, infinite possibilities. Go to pareyewear.com and use code LOVIN for 15% off your first pair. And support our show by mentioning that a sandwich and some lovin' sent you in your post checkout survey. That's pair, P A I R, eyewear.com, code LOVIN. Now, I don't want to come across like I'm poo-pooing any of this, because I think it's... Are you it's, going back to poo-poo me no, no, again? No, 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 I think all of this is wonderful. I think it's great. I am so excited that you have done this, and I'm very happy. And still I'm, in shock. I'm a still little. a little bit in disbelief. I was surprised my parents were as chill about it, because honestly, I didn't tell them at first. I well, waited to the last minute, because I was, before my safety class, I'm like, I've got to tell them. I've got to tell them before I announce it on the radio. I've got to tell them before I announce it on the podcast. I've got to tell them. But I was hesitant because I was afraid they were going to be like, you can't do that. But they were really excited and proud. Yeah. I was really happy. My daddy used to drive um, a, a Harley, so. It's an accomplishment. Yeah. It really is. Baby. It's a, it's your hobby now. It's a, it's going to be a, a, a skill you get better at. Yes. You'll 
ride to the store and ride so to what Starbucks. Are you, what well, are you poo-pooing? I'm not, I just, I don't want to make it sound like I'm like, oh, I'm so anxious that you're doing this and I don't want you to do it. No, I want you to do it. I am very happy that you're doing it. But? But, you know, riding vehicles like these um, and motorcycles, there's a risk. And you have to just be as safe as possible. You've taken the training. You're going to wear your gear. You're going to ride with me. And everything's going to be cool. Okay. Everything's going to be cool. That's it. That's all. all right. That's it. Okay. We have stressed that issue quite a lot. There you go. Well, you know, I, I stress and worry about stuff all the time, right? Yeah. It's my bit. Yeah. It's not <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> um, okay. Well, that's... Gosh. That There's might, that. That's my big news. That might be the biggest news we've ever dropped. I don't know. It's just like I was telling Jonathan. I said, you're, you're, there are going to be people that are like, What? She's doing what? All right, we have belabored this. We've got to move on and talk about something else. There are some people that don't care. <laughs> they want to talk about something else. Well, you got that little forward button thing. You know? Well, then they don't know where to stop forwarding. Isn't that aggravating where you're like, ah, I'm boring, forward, 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 and then you're like, ooh, that was interesting, back, 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 and you got to find that sweet spot to pick up where you want. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to do... You're going to flap those... That... You're going to give me a paper cut so severe one day doing that. I'm going to be really upset. Letters? I need protective eyewear on. Pair eyewear. That. I know. Oh. Uh, this first letter is from Kim. Subject, ailments. Hi, Alan and Kelly. Hello. I hope I haven't read this. No, I don't I think don't I have. Know. I just listened to the episode where Kelly talked about going to the cardiologist and gynecologist. After listening to the podcast for years, I was hoping that one of those doctors would have mentioned that Kelly's, many of Kelly's ailments were due to estrogen leaving her body. Oh. Or maybe they did, but it wasn't shared. More than likely, they didn't because most doctors have very minimal training in menopause. Previously, during the Go Red for Women episode, I was hoping that would be mentioned too. When Kelly mentioned things like, I don't know what's going on and I'm falling apart in the last episode, I had to reach out. It's menopause. The symptoms include heart palpitations, vertigo, lack of energy, brain fog, crankiness, yeah, low libido, joint pain, etc. Libido, honey. Low libido, joint pain, etc. Many things beyond hot flashes. I highly recommend following Dr. Mary Claire Haver. She just posted about heart palpitations the other day. She was on Mel Robbins' podcast recently, and that's a good episode. Also, Let's Talk Menopause on YouTube and podcast Hello, Men Hello Menopause. That's a good one. Hello, Menopause. So sexy. With Stacey London from Not What Not to Wear. Oh, I remember her. Hello, Menopause. Her and was his name Clint? Was his name Clint? All of these platforms have changed my menopause life by educating me on how my body, every organ system, is different without estrogen and sharing tips and tricks for how to thrive and improve my longevity. The Menopause Brain is also a great book. If you've got this far, thanks for reading and best of luck. <laughs> Love the show. Never miss an episode. Aw, thank Kim. you. Kim. Kim, you know, that's very sweet. And I want you to give me that. That's the most menopause resources you'll ever need. That's that a is, lot. That's awesome. That's a lot. That's helpful. You know, I did <coughs> pellet therapy and my my OBGYN, my, my former OBGYN was not happy with me for that mm. because there's a lot, you know, there's an old school way of dealing with things and the new way and um, he was very upset by my high levels of estrogen from the pellets. He said they were at breast cancer levels and then I was just listening to a podcast um, talking about that and they were saying that that's been debunked, that those high levels of, of estrogen aren't what's giving um, giving you breast cancer levels. So I was thinking, well, maybe I do need to go back on um, some sort of hormonal therapy. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be pellet therapy. I really don't want to do that if I don't have to um, because I feel like I've gone through the worst part of menopause, which is the, the hot flashes for me. But I think there's a lot of other things that I'm probably not aware of. My girlfriend told me today she had to go to the hospital um, because her, uh, Diana. Remember Diana? Really? I don't want to be putting her business out there too well, much. Well, you just I don't did. She, I, I wasn't going to say her name until you made me. Well, you didn't you have twisted to. my you, arm. You didn't have to. You could have made up a name. You could have said Leia. Well, I don't lie. 
But anyway, she, we were talking about some things, and she was telling me how her shoulder was just killing her. Da, da, da. I was like, you might have frozen shoulder, which I discovered is a part of menopause, Alan. It's called frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder. Look, see, this is what I deal with. See? A man who thinks this is all just, oh, it's another one of your ailments. I didn't say that. Did you just see your face? I've never said that. It, the only thing his face was lacking was, <laughs> menopause, frozen shoulder. Never made a That's joke. That's what was missing. Never made a joke about menopause. Use your face. Menopause. Your face. You're, when I said frozen soldier, you, shoulder, you, were, you looked like it was fake. You were positioning me in a poor light with the listener. And That's the truth. Listener, you can see for yourself. Well, listener, it's not the truth. If you look truth. at our YouTube channel. I haven't made fun of, y'all bicker too much. That's I'm not, not going to listen to this podcast anymore. Stop bickering. That wasn't bickering. Alan, you stop. Kelly can bicker all she wants. You stop. Anyway, there are a lot of, and I do need to look into, I would like to do more holistic approaches, I think. This next letter is from Marvis, my man. My man, Marvis. Subject, yo, A-Train. That's you. I'll just sit this one out. Well, it's a very short letter. My letters tend to be very short. Have you ever purchased Oliver Cabell? He's referring to shoes. Are they comf comfortable and do they hold up if you've ever purchased them? Are they better than Vans? Marvis. Marvis, great question. Years ago, <clears throat> I did a, uh, <clears throat> an, a photo shoot for Oliver Cabell. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence that Marvis would ask about such a specific brand. I don't know if he Marvis even what knows that. What a specific that. brand no, I, question no, I, Marvis I, asks. It almost <laughs> sounds like... A joint effort. I modeled, <clears throat> I modeled some shoes for Oliver size twelve. Modeled some shoes for Oliver Cabell, and but they were like r nice, nice shoes, like not dress shoes, but uh, sneakers, but like white. But not sneakers. like Vans. But not like Vans. So Marvis, in my experience, we're doing apples to oranges here. Uh, Oliver Cabell makes great shoes, in my opinion, but I'm a Vans guy. Give me the Vans every time. There you go. But, Hashtag. Definitely won't be working for Oliver Cabell again. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was like three or four years ago. Oh, yeah. You're done. No, but... You're I, toast with Oliver. I wear Vans every day, but... He really does. Because you can more just, of a Van head. I, yeah, more of a Van guy. Why don't you become a brand ambassador for Van? Well, Vans. I wouldn't mind that, but they certainly haven't called me. Um, you need to hashtag them more. Yeah. This next letter is from... <clears throat> cheaters on here this next letter is from Jessica hey Kelly and Alan subject hey. Kelly is me born 24 years sooner hey Kelly and Alan I just listened to episode 527 and Kelly was talking about team sports and hating being embarrassed in OMG I have never resonated so much I too am a serial quitter my parents tried to get me into sports when I was young, and I'd always quit. I don't want to cry just hearing that. Oh, man. It makes me... It, it, ugh, it and it was sad. And it was always because I wasn't perfect at them. I only like to do things that I'm good at. I remember being pretty decent at basketball, so in middle school, I joined the team. And at one of our first practices, the coach uh, blew the whistle on me for traveling, and I quit on the spot. <laughs> that resonates with me. <laughs> you That's don't even good. know. I like that. It's firstborn syndrome. You feel Is like... It? Well, I'm first born, and I, I don't think I've ever done that. But, hey, everybody's different. But you did a lot of solo sports. You did golf. You didn't do a lot of team sports, did you? Basketball. Did you? Yeah. You feel like you need to be perfect, the best, or you're not do interested in doing it. There are many benefits to being first born and all the personality traits that come with it, but it is also stressful because you feel like you're always trying to be the best of everything. Don't be too hard on yourself. If you're embarrassed, don't do it. I, and don't feel bad. There's plenty of things you're great at, and you should be proud of those things. Love you guys. Jessica. Thank you. That's very sweet because I really, I, I envy, I look at friends of mine who are around my same age, and they'll still get out there and try stuff. They're like, I don't care how silly I look. I'm just going to do it. And I guess as I've gotten older, it depends on what it is. Um, you know, getting out and participating in a dance contest or something, you know, who cares? But when it's a sport, I don't know, just the... That just takes me back to that. She's talking, I guess, about the um, the baseball charity thing where I had 13 swings at a baseball being lobbed at me so gently, and I missed every time. And I was so embarrassed I could have cried, and I feel so embarrassed even admitting that because it's so stupid. 
It's so stupid and ridiculous, but I was so embarrassed and I don't like that feeling. And so that's why I just never, I just never, and I hate, I, I don't want to say I hate that about myself, but I really don't like that about me. I don't like that side of my personality. Yeah, th that's an interesting letter because um, I too am a firstborn. I like to be good at things, but when something's difficult for me, I like it. I like it to, because it, 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 I don't know. It triggers something in your it brain. It triggers something in my brain. That's why I like magic. That's See, why it I, triggers me to shut down. That's why I like golf. That's why I've never ridden a motorcycle before. I want to learn how to do that. I like things that aren't easy. Like, I don't like, I like things that not everybody can do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if I can do them, then I'm like, I did it. I did it. You know? That, and that's a good feeling for me. Now, I know everybody's different. But I wish I was more. I really, truly, I, I look at how many missed opportunities I had to, you know, be a part of a team and to have that camaraderie. And, you know, I just didn't, you know, because of the way I, my education, I didn't get into a sorority. I didn't do any of those things, you know. So I feel I feel a lot of regret for that, but it's a wasted emotion, right? So I don't live in that regret space, but you know I feel sad about it from time to time. Let me let me uh, just to piggyback on the letter and let me try to pay, I'll try to very quickly paint you a mental picture of something happened that happened to me in high school at a golf tournament, and you tell me what you would have done in this situation. <laughs> so my team, there's five. There's five players on a golf team, typically, on a high school or college golf team. And all five guys go out, and they take the four best scores. And the four best scores, you add those up, and that's the team score, okay? So there's one-round tournaments, there's two-round tournaments, whatever. There's different formats and all of that. But that's how it works. Your best golfer is your one, you have a two, three, four, and five. You know, those are your best guys. That doesn't mean that the first guy is always going to shoot the lowest score. I mean, yeah. you're hoping that you're five. expected to. Yeah, he's expected to. You're hoping your five guy shoots the lowest yeah. score because that will really help your team out. So, you know, when I was a sophomore, I wasn't a very good player. I, I took up golf really late, and it was hard, and I didn't know what I was doing, and it was frustrating, but I was like, this is so much fun, you know? I, when I hit a good shot, I'm like, holy crap, that was like, a, like I tell you. It's a freaking minor miracle that I just did that, you know? So I got better my junior year. And then I was really good my senior year. When I say really good, I could shoot around par every time, in the 70s, every time. So there was a tournament, and it was a big deal. This tournament was a big deal. It was one of those tournaments that I had never played in where there's freaking people everywhere. They're standing on both sides of the fairway. It was like you were in <laughs> yeah. Augusta. Right. They're standing around the tee box. All and, the pressure. And they're just standing there looking at you. And these are, these are other parents. These are other coaches. These are people who... They don't want to see you do bad, but... They want their kid to they win, They want not their you. kid to win, not yeah. me, you know? So this was a traveling tournament. This wasn't anywhere close to, to home. So we went to this this town to play this tournament. I think it was Brownwood was where the, the, the country club was. Well, of course, in the spring in Texas, which is golf season for the golf teams, the weather always sucks. It's windy. It's cold. There's thunderstorms. So we show up at this course. It's raining the wind's going sideways, the rain's going sideways, and they don't call the tournament unless it's just torrential lightning. or lightning, lightning especially. So you got your rain suits on and all this crap, you know, and, I'm, and this is a big deal. This is a big tournament. So I go to the first tee, and this hole has out of bounds all the way down the right side of the hole. The one place you don't want to hit it, right? So I get up on the first tee, and I'm I, I feel like I'm about to throw up. Like, I'm that nervous. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm literally about to vomit, like, on the tee box. And I remember, th I remember thinking, how in the hell did I get here, you know? And I hit... You just want to quit? I just, I could have <laughs> just said, I'm not doing this. Peace out. Out! I hit a big banana slice the, up in the air. The wind takes it out of bounds. Oh. So that's one shot. Penalty shot. Two. So now I'm hitting my third shot. Hit my third shot off the tee. Third shot. Three out of bounds. Was it the wind or was it you? Both. I just hit a bad shot plus the wind. So I've now hit three. Penalty shot four. Now I'm hitting five. 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 I hit three balls out of bounds on the first tee at this big tournament with all those people watching me. Are you about to cry now? You sound a little upset. No, I'm fine now, but I remember <laughs> I remember at the time that was like the worst thing that could have possibly happened in my life. Did you lose? 
Oh, I shot a horrible score that day. Yeah. Well, it was raining and windy. But that's everybody else shot bad that's, too. That's the kind of stuff that in sports, like that I faced, and I could have said, I guess I could have said, "Screw this! That was so embarrassing. I never want to show my face again." But it'd be one thing if it was beautiful sunny day with perfect wind conditions. Right. But it was raining and well, windy and. You know. But I end up making a 13 on the hole. And Is that bad? A 13? It was a For par- Kelly Raspberry Evans, I would be very pleased with that. It was a par 4, and I made a 13. I'd on, be happy to get it in 13 on, at this point. On the first hole. So I guess my point, too, the story is too long, but it was like, <laughs> I was thinking, this is like the worst thing that's ever happened in my life at the time. Oh, my. But... I didn't quit, like, because I like golf so much. You know, I guess you have to love something. The moral of the story is you got to love something to keep doing it like that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something that I love that was life changing is our Helix mattress. I think I was asking Alan, how long have we had this? It's been about five years now, and we have truly had the best sleep of our lives since we got it because we were perfectly matched with the Helix Dusk Lux model, and that's because Alan took the Helix Sleep Quiz for both of us because he's so sweet like that. Answered a few questions about how we sleep, about our bodies, and in less than two minutes, we had our perfect match. You could try the Helix Sleep Quiz for yourself to find yours. They've got 20 unique mattresses, including their Lux and Elite uh, collections, the Elite the Helix Plus for big and tall sleepers, the award-winning Helix Kids mattress. These mattresses are designed for all sleep positions. You've got memory foam for side sleepers. I suddenly can't speak. Um, They've got responsive foam for back and stomach sleepers, cooling features to keep you comfortable all night. Their hybrid design combines steel coils with premium foam. It's the perfect mix for support and comfort. And when you find your perfect match, that personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door, comes with a 100-night trial, a 10 to 15-year warranty, depending on the one you choose. So if you're ready for the best sleep of your life, take the Helix Sleep Quiz today and find your perfect mattress. You will not regret it. Helix is offering up to 30% off all wow. mattress orders. Yeah, 30% off. And two free pillows for our listeners. All you got to do is go to helixsleep.com sandwich. That's helixsleep.com slash sandwich. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Uh, okay, two more. Th- we're going to bring it home for Jerome. we got two more things. Okay. Um, one is a, a, well, our last letter for tonight. And this, dear, sweet, clean, good, strong listener, we've received lots of great letters over the years. Lots of them. One of the best was uh, my man, my man in Montana, Luke. No, I'm Luke. He's Han. Luke. No, he's Han. I'm Luke. Han <laughs> sent me a letter of how whipped he was. Yeah, with he was me. a fan of mine. He was a fan of yours. Yes, he thought you were. Did you talk too much? He, he just let me talk. Right. He was so whipped by me and my. I bit. love him. Oh. And he told his his wife how annoying I was, and just and he sent me a letter. And you know. Upset he had to be to actually take time yes. to write oh, I know. a letter. I know. And so he told me about me, and then I emailed him you back. Bowed up. I bowed back up and told him <laughs> about him. And then we kind of were just like, just kind of made up over the email. And then we started to like correspond. And when are we going to Montana? And then we became kind of buddies. I know. Aren't we supposed to go? So now we're, we're buddies. I want to go. But I turned him. I Are you going to turn another one, or am I going to be in this position? Well, that was a great letter that he sent, was my point. But I got a letter not long ago, and this pops up in my email, and it's from Joshua. Well, the subject is Problem with Alan. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I was worried it was going to be my turn. So you don't I'm, care about my feelings. I just am glad it's not me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, if there's ever a problem on this podcast, it's usually... Me. I'm good. I'm good yeah. with that. I'd say nine out of ten times it's with me. I'm un- unhappy about the one that it's me. <laughs> but go ahead. So I see this, and in my heart, kind of, it drops a little bit. I don't want people to have a problem with me. I want people to think I'm okay. I want people to think I'm an okay guy. Do you? Yes. Well, that's a new, kinder, gentler Alan. Well, I, for the most part. All right. For the most part. Okay. Unless you tell I'll, me, I'll buy into the premise. Well, unless you tell me my. Coffee is tea. Then I'm gonna say, well, no, it's not. It's this is this is co- uh, tea. This isn't coffee. 
No, it's T. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I don't know. I'm confused. That's, that's a. You have to know what he's talking about. Right. If you're a new listener, you why have no I, idea what that's about. Why did my voice do? All, why did it go like that when I, I was know. saying all that? Get back. Get back to. Oh, the, sorry, the sorry, Problem sorry. that is you. Well, he says problem with Alan, and I'm like, man, I don't even know if I want to read this. Well, I'll read it. Well, well, this is one I think I have to do. Okay. Uh, and you'll see why. So he he says, dear in all capitals. Dear Alan and the rest. Oh, I'm the rest. Q, a comment from Kelly about being referred to as the rest. How about that? The guy's a fortune teller. He, oh. <laughs> he knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I've been listening to Kelly since she was on the Eagle. Well, see, I was never on the Eagle. Q, I was never on the Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 1862. And the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Nationally syndicated. Q, nationally syndicated since 2008. Once I finished every episode of Love Letters, Love Letters to Kelly, Q, Love Letters, Love Letters to Kelly, with White Cheddar Robert, Q. Love Stop letters. talking. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that one. I figured that I'd give a sandwich and some love in a try. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, Alan. Yeah. I got through 30 minutes. Of one episode. Aww. And I was horrified. Aww. I was mortified. Is that really what he's writing? Oh, wow. I thought... Well, that's what you say. How does he know how much you say <laughs> in all your bits after listening to one 30-minute episode? I thought, quote, Alan is a fruking a-hole. He's the type of guy who would wear a flesh-colored Speedo that says cocky show stealer. All he is is a walking, talking bit. Okay, now I'm getting this is an entire bit. End quote. Okay. So, I did what you guys did with Breaking Bad, and I pulled out prematurely. I know. We never got past what episode of that. Was it three? Four? Q. Sniff. Oh, yeah. Then I decided to give it one more try, and I'm so glad that I did. I listen every single day Aww. on the way to and from work in between the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Nationally syndicated. And I have made subsequent, so I have subsequently made it to episode 310. Wow. Working my way down while listening to all the new ones as they come out. I gotta hand it to Alan. Q. <laughs> Hello, hand. His ridiculousness wore me down. And now I love him almost as desperately as I love Kelly. Aw, see, honey? Yeah. I, that, yeah. That feels good for someone to say that about me. <laughs> Since I have a few hundred episodes left, I can't say that I'm a very, very, or even just very best customer yet, but I'm still a good, strong, dear, sweet, clean listener. Aw, that's really great. What's his name again? Side note, oh. if I had a dime... Q, dime. For every podcast reference in this email, Kelly would still have several trillion more than me, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Yeah. J Josh. P.S. Yogurt. Yogurt out. Josh, that's very, very sweet. I love that. You know, you're going backwards. Our friend, uh, Susan, she was kind of doing the same exact thing. We've known her for years. She's like, I want to get to know your podcast better. So she's been doing a deep dive going back into the archives. And she's asking us stuff. We're like... What the heck are you talking about? She's like, episode 211? No idea. When you said this, I'm like, clueless. Yeah. That we talked about certain subjects. So, we were actually talking to somebody today. It might be kind of fun for us to go back to the beginning and revisit some of our first shaky podcasts. Not that they're all Not that we're professionals now. And but react? Yeah. Yeah, that might be kind of fun that to would do, be right? Fun. No, we should do that. But Josh, that's very sweet. Thank so, you. So I, I messaged Josh back. I emailed Josh back because I love this letter so much. I was rolling. You frame it? Well, I was literally, I was laughing in Starbucks reading this thing like out loud. People were looking at me like, <laughs> what are you doing? But You're like podcast host. Right. Podcast host. Right, right. And producer. So I, um, uh, here's what I said back to, to Josh. My man. I'm sitting in Starbies and I'm LOLing to myself. Might be my favorite Shake Papers Violently letter I've ever read. Oh yay, oh yay. So it has been written. Let it be done. On this day in the year of 2024, this 26th day of April, one good strong Joshua Cross, a.k.a. 
good, strong JC has been bestowed very best customer status. Oh, that's the day he wrote it. Yes. I will share your, shake papers violently, letter on a future podcast as it made my day. Love you desperately, A-Train. Well, hopefully you hear this, Josh. I hope he does, because that really brought joy to my life. Very nice. Thanks for sticking with us. I know not all of our podcasts have been, you know, great. Some of them are kind of tough to get through. Why, why Trust you, me. Why are you besmirching it's our... It's true. Why are you besmirching our product? Not all of our podcasts are great. You know, that's a good way to end it. I had another... You're not. <laughs> I had it. Oh, yeah. Well, not what you're saying is a good way to end it. That letter was a good way to end it. <laughs> no. Jesus. Well, it's true. If people decide to go back, and they're like, well, I'm curious now. I'm going to go back. Okay. Well, now that you just shat on the... the uh, I didn't sam- shat Now on that it. you just shat on the A Sandwich of Some Eleven brand, why don't I just read this? Okay. What are you talking about? No, I thought we were going to end on an up note, but we're going to end... That was an up note. We're going to end on a sad note. Oh, no. Alan, that was an up note. Just end it. No, we're going to make it sadder. Ugh. No? This is this is news. This is news. Okay, well, we'll do we'll it. We'll do it. It's fine. Now you've okay. already built it up. So, when I, this is the last thing we're going to do. When I was a kid, going to Red Lobster was a big deal. Oh, my gosh. When it came to Florence, South Carolina... There was like a three-month wait. You could not get in. You had to be on the wait list for months. Now, let me tell you something, and I say this in all seriousness. When my daughter was still coming to see us, one of our uh, daddy-daughter date things was to go to Red Lobster. That was our thing. Got a lot of good memories. My mom... When I was a kid, when, when my dad was on assignment with the Air Force, he was gone for a little while. Well, my mom, every Wednesday, would take me and my sister to Red Lobster because it was payday. So she had some money, and it was payday. So she took us to Red Lobster. And, and that was, was a big deal. It was a big deal. That was a it big deal. It wasn't the cheapest thing in the world, but those cheddar biscuits and the, you know, it was just and good the, memories. And the thing about a Filipino mom, my mom not might not have always bought me, like, say, the fanciest, like, uh, toys or clothes or whatever. I had nice stuff. I'm, I'm not know, saying yeah. that. I'm just saying, if there was one thing she never cared about spending money on, it was food. So I would go to Red Lobster with my mom, and she would let me order a lobster. Alan. Yes. And I was a, a, a teenager. I would order a freaking... Did you not see how much it cost? She didn't care. She but said, did you? I mean, come no, on. No, you don't care. Do you, I, they're like, I was like our kids. They, like, they well, don't care. They don't care. I'll have the king size jumbo right. platter. Right. So I got this news that Red Lobster, this is from the Red Lobster Instagram. And I was reading this today, and this sounds so freaking corny. But I was like, it's get so sad. Freaking choked up reading it's this. It's so sad. The, but it's not just Red Lobster. So many businesses are just folding, and it's just. Awful. So here's what the letter said. <clears throat> this is from Red Lobster. It says, Dear guests. How is this ending on a high note? Well, it's, oh. it's news. It's interesting. Oh. It says, You may be aware that Red Lobster has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Well, this is means they're not going away. Right. We'd like to take a moment to explain what this means for our company and for you, our valued guests. For more than five decades, Red Lobster has been a part of your... I can't read this. Read it, please. Red Lobster. For, for the seafood lover in you. I can't read it. I was getting choked up the first time. I for can't read it. For more than five decades, Red Lobster has been part of your family's life. We've been there for your celebrations, big and small. We may be the place that you first discovered your love of seafood or where you met the love of your life on a first date. Birthdays, graduations, anniversaries, and yes, weddings. We've been there for all of them. And Red Lobster is determined to be there for these moments for generations to come. And that's why we filed for Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Protection. Bankruptcy is a word that is often misunderstood. Filing for bankruptcy does not mean we are going out of business. In fact, it means just the opposite. It is a legal process that allows us to make changes to our business and our cost structure so that Red Lobster can continue as a stronger company going forward. As many of you know, we recently made the tough decision to close a number of our restaurants. So they did have to shut some down. The truth is, some of the world's most beloved brands like Delta and Hertz have used this same process to protect their futures and their customers stood with them and rooted them on. And because of that, they emerged stronger. Together, we have a lot worth rooting for. 
We've made delicious, high-quality seafood accessible for generations. Many of you tried lobster for the first time at our restaurant. We've brought you Lobster Fest and Crab Fest over the years. And of course, no meal is complete without Cheddar Bay Biscuits. We are here and ready to continue making memories with you. Join us, dine with us, root for us. All that gets me. Together we can write a new chapter. I don't know why this hits me in the feel so bad. Because it is. It's weird. This is so weird that I feel like this. Because there is memories. It was a special restaurant, a special place. When I first met your children, now my children, where did we go? We went went to Red Red Lobster. Lobster. I forgot about that. Alan, (laughs) we don't talk about this. It's not my proudest moment. But we went to the pool at Alan's apartment, his compartment, we called it. The kids called it compartment. And we're in the pool, and Alan was making me uh, adult lemonades. And Alan overserved me. I guess it was just, it was a hot day. You know, when you're drinking something sweet and you don't taste the alcohol. Kelly Raspberry no. got a little overserved. No. And it was like, we're hungry. And the kids, of course, want to go to Red Lobster. And I sit down. I am buzzed out of my mind trying to keep it together in front of these children who I don't want them to run home and tell their mother, Daddy's girlfriend's a drunk. <laughs> I'm ordering the deep fried captain's, was it the captain's feast? Oh, it was like the, ad, it, ordered, was the it was the admiral's feast. <laughs> I ordered the deep fried It was fried the biggest thing I had. feast, and I'm just trying to shove greasy food in my belly to soak up the Was that alcohol. when you went to the apartment and you went, huh? Or was that another no, time? No, that was a different time. Oh, yeah. The kids were not Sorry, mine. that was a different but time. But I was like, whoa. And we have pictures of me with the kids, and I'm like, <laughs> so bad. Thank you, Red Lobster, for that memory. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm really, I'm hoping, honestly, our last few experiences of Red Lobster have been rough. They were, you know, it was COVID, under, it, every restaurant went through this. You go to the restaurant, there's two people working there. Yeah. It's just, the you know, the quality of service <clears throat> went down the toilet. It's just been really hard to recover. But I do hope, you know what did them in, and they're not joking, it was the endless... They said it was endless the, shrimp. They lost millions on that. I yeah, it was. How, the, what was it called? Endless shrimp. Endless shrimp. It was literally, like all you can eat shrimp. Yeah. Literally, that cost them millions, and it put them in a hole. Apparently, and then COVID, everything just compounded. Yeah. Perfect storm. People are, you know, having to cut back because everything's so expensive. It's just. You know, I hope that they can emerge from it. I would hate to see. I, at first, I, I knew they were closing some. I'm so glad they're not closing all of them. Because Red Lobster is part of our, the fabric of America. Well, for, for a lot of everyday Americans, I think it is. It's fancy. It, I mean, and, well, and people make fun of it, but it's nice. People do, p- people do make, special. They make a lot of fun of it, especially... Snobs. Well... It, make fun of it. You, you know, Red Lobster is a chain seafood place, and it's accessible to a lot of people. So naturally, people who are foodies, they're going to turn their nose up at it. They would not turn their nose up to a Cheddar Bay biscuit but, in private. But my, from they're buying the mix at the grocery store and making them at home. For me, growing up in Wichita Falls, Texas, and just the memories and everything, it's like I had the weirdest feeling hearing this well, today. It's I was like, be okay, "That's honey. weird." Let's go see if our Red Lobster's still open. Yeah, I hope it is. Maybe Cole will want to go there instead of Cheesecake Factory for his. You birthday. know, Bennigan's. Clothes, okay. I don't care about Bennigan's too much, you know. And yeah, I didn't grow up steak and ale. Yeah, okay, whatever. Well, when I moved to Dallas, that was my first experience with steak Longhorn and ale. Steak it was really and, no, good. Uh, Texas Land and Cattle, okay. They went under two. I used to like it, but I don't. I guess I have an. I guess I have an emotional attachment with Red Lobster. Your good because childhood memories. Childhood memories, and then I, as an adult, I remembered those good memories, and then tried to show my kids that this is a fun place. Well, it's like. Not to tie this into Kid Craddock, but I think that, I think when, you know, Kid died, it'll be 11 years ago this July, the Kid Craddock Morning Show, that we continue in his honor, um, that uh, so many people, they were like, I literally had people tell me, I cried harder when Kid died than when I did when a relative died. And they said, I feel kind of, you know, guilty about that. But I said, I think what that was was kid represented a part of your childhood, your nostalgia. Yeah, and when that yeah. died, 
that that was the profound sadness people were feeling. So I think yeah. that's what you felt was that profound sadness was part of your childhood yeah. memories was maybe that's being it. killed off. Yeah. But hopefully it'll survive, and hopefully our red lobster up the street, honestly, hopefully got their act together because last time we went in, their service was terrible. But hopefully they got their act together and we can yeah. go back as a family. But interesting news, interesting feelings, and they'll they'll hopefully make it. I hope they do. Well, now I've got a, a craving for some Cheddar Bay biscuits. You know, I've got a box of the mix in the pantry. I usually do the chart your own uh, course with three selections. With the uh, shrimp scampi, the crab alfredo, and what do I usually get along? I get another kind of like Walt shrimp, favorite mm. shrimp or whatever, mm. which is just fried shrimp. because you're connected to the Walt thing. And then I, yeah, good call. And a uh, load of baked potato. Uh, oh, Yeah. Cheddar Bay Biscuits, of course. And a Caesar salad. Caesar salad. Duh. It's no brainer. Yeah, Caesar salad. And all of that is usually plenty. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have uh, bemoaned Red Lobster, and now we've bemoaned the end of our podcast. We have. Not forever, just for t- this episode. Right. Well, this was good, babe. A lot of good... Went a lot longer than we planned. A lot Sorry. of good information. Um, Sorry to our new podcast advisor. We went way long. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, recording this on May 21st. Tomorrow is May 22nd. So happy, happy birthday to my son, Cole. Cole Evans will be 16 tomorrow. So we're going to celebrate tomorrow. He wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory. So that's that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take him to the Cheesecake Factory, see his grandma and grandpa. and um, He can order whatever he wants. Order whatever he wants. So uh, it's hard to believe my little guy, who's now a young man, is 16. Hard to believe. All right, babe. Got anything else? No. All right. Thank y'all for listening and, and to this exceptionally long episode. I apologize for that. Well, love you desperately. Love you. I love Can Am desperately, and I love that you're. Me too. And I love that you're doing this desperately. I will tell you what, from the bottom of my heart, I love Red Lobster desperately. But I am sure we will podcast again. Real soon. We'll be eating red lobster pretty soon, too, I'd imagine. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good. Bye. We just had so much to catch up on. I know. Um, what am I going to call this, though? Now we got to come up with a catchy title.